Can this game get here already? I feel like we've been waiting for weeks and weeks and weeks. We Let's have. just play this game. Well, that's what happens when you have a buy the first round. Ugh. You have an extra week before you play. Is that how that works? Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. Okay. This is the Eagle Eye Podcast presented by Nissan. He is the genius Ruben Frank who figured out how the bye week works on Dave Zangaro. Uh, it, it is. It, it does feel like a really long layoff, and I, I can kind of sense it with the team, too. It's like they've been waiting, and, and they're excited to get it going. Uh, practice was loud on Thursday. Friday practice on Thursday. Yeah. Today is Thursday. Um, yeah, I was talking to um, Chiron Johnson about – the uh, he was just in his locker and I was just BSing with him about you you couldn't tell I don't think and he was agreeing that you couldn't tell this team was about to play the biggest game of the year playoff game just from the, the locker room is exactly the same as it is every week BG screaming locker rooms closed a minute after it opens and uh, Robert Quinn blasting the weirdest music you'll ever hear in a locker room and it was just a normal a normal day and I think that's a good thing and I, I obviously the stakes are higher and and more you know we, we all know the implications but uh, i think you want your team to just be in normal mode during the week yeah and i, I think there's something to that but on the flip side of it it's this is a really important game and i think playoff football is a little different i think the game is but i think the preparation week has to be the same it's like i think nick said last week or two weeks ago if you start preparing differently now, then what does that say about the way you're preparing all sure. year? Um, so, I, yeah, I think once you get on the field, I think the game's a little bit faster, probably a little bit more intense. But, um, yeah, I, I, I think during the week, you just kind of stay true to what you've been doing, what got you here. Yeah, they seem locked in. Yeah. I mean, it, it looks like they're very focused. And uh, it was funny, actually, in a, in a weird way. We walked into the bubble where they had practice on Thursday because it was raining. Uh, and they were playing Dreams and Nightmares, which was the theme song of the 2017 run. But right before warm up started, they cut it off. I found it interesting. Yeah, I didn't. I, I don't. I, I don't know what that is, and uh, I didn't find it interesting <laughs> because I don't know what it is. But um, yeah. All right. You didn't hear that song a million times that year. Uh, it didn't register if I did. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, I I, I think they are pretty lot. The, the one thing that I was impressed with in the locker room all week was whether you were doing an interview or just talking to a guy. Everybody was talking about how how impressed they were with the Giants in Minnesota, and I, I think that that really it might even be better off that they won like they did, really impressive fashion than if it was an ugly game. And, I, mm-hmm. and they, they really got their attention. They they know what yeah. they're up against. And it is funny in a way though because I. I think some some folks are looking at this from like a negative standpoint of uh, you're catching the Giants at a bad time. And but I mean, whoever the Eagles were going to play this week was going to be coming off a win. Right. And if the Eagles played in the wild card round, they'd be coming off a win, too. But they earned the right now to play last week. So I think you have to put it in perspective that like last week was better than a win for the Eagles. Exactly. It was a win without getting anybody nicked or banged up yeah yeah Yeah. all right let's get into some of these matchups because uh they have played the giants twice this year but i don't really know how much you can gain from looking back at those two games the very different teams personnel wise and obviously that week 18 game i almost throw it out nothing into that yeah uh but the the week 14 game well i put one thing i put one thing into it what's that speaks very highly of their coach to have those guys as ready their backups the backups, the Giants, yeah. yeah to have them as ready as they were because that was not a fluke i mean it was 19 nothing uh but the, they, they just fought and battled mm-hmm. and that's a reflection of the coach yeah that was one of those games too where if they eagles just it's true take care of business in the red zone it probably looks a lot worse than yeah there's no question but i th- I, th- I guess my point is that he's a terrific coach and it's very good coach turn that thing around a lot quicker than I thought they could. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, all right, let's get into these matchups for this game. The first one to me, and uh, Lane Johnson didn't speak to reporters on Thursday. We we're hoping to talk to him and, and find out how the week went. Uh, Nick Sirianni earlier in the day said he, they're hopeful Lane plays, and it, it's like trending that way, and it, the week's gone well. But Lane Johnson against, against Kayvon Thibodeau, pretty big matchup. 
yeah, I don't really know what to expect from Lane. And you try not to read too much into it. Um, you know, is he not talking because it didn't go well? Probably not. Lane's a moody guy. When he talks, he's, uh, you know. And, and he's going through a lot this week to get his body ready, I'm sure. That's for sure. So I wouldn't read too much into it. Uh, it would have been nice to hear from him and, and get his thoughts. But um, he's had, you know, he's had a month off since that Dallas game. And uh, I'm really curious to see how it'll go. I, I, I think he'll be okay. I don't think he'll be 100%. I don't think that's possible with this injury. But. He's he's been around. He's savvy enough to know what he can do, what he can't do, and um, I, I think he'll I think he'll acquit himself well. Yeah, and the Giants have decent edge rushers. I mean, Thibodeau, a, a very high pick, who's I think going to be an excellent player. Uh, and then Aziz Ojolari, the other edge rusher, a little banged up, suffered a quad injury. He's dealt with a lot of injuries in his career. A little banged up coming into this one. But it's a decent test for Lane and. You, you're looking at uh, – they can't get ahead of themselves. We can a little bit. Whoever they play in the NFC Championship game, if they get there, they're going to be good edge rushers. Yeah, no doubt. I like Ocelari when he's healthy. He's, he's a good player, good young yeah. player. He's Honestly, he's the kind of player who could give Mylotta a little trouble because he, he's small and quick. Mylotta gets his hands on him, it's over. But yeah, those, are, those seem to be the rushers that give – Another Georgia guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 22. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, yeah. He's he, he's dangerous. He only what he played seven games this year. Oh, Jalari? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Thibodeau's the the better of the two, but he had five and a half sacks in seven games. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we'll see. He only played eight snaps against the Vikings. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The O line hasn't been hasn't been at its best down the stretch. I mean, the whole team really hasn't. But there's a lot of factors in that. Certainly having Minshew out there, all of a sudden you have to play a completely different way. Um, but it's a challenge for them. Yeah, it certainly is. And we'll, we'll all be watching Lane. I mean, that's something to keep an eye on. And I talked to Jack Driscoll a little bit on Thursday. And uh, he's it's such a weird position for the backup to be in because, like, he obviously wants to play, but he doesn't want to play because if he's out there, something went wrong. He wants to play, but he doesn't want to have to play. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird uh, weird situation to be in, but he's trying to be as ready as he can because it's, there's a very real possibility Lane gets out there and goes, this isn't working, and yeah. Jack has to go in. And Jack, Jack, I remember a few weeks ago, told me that the whole key to his role is embracing it and accepting it. This is my role right now, and I want to be the best I can, whether I'm not playing, whether I'm on the practice squad, whether I'm inactive, whether I'm starting – whether coming in the middle of the game, be prepared for, for anything. And he, I think you need a certain mentality for that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more than just talent. It's just I mean, you have to be really mentally sharp because you're you're preparing every week as if you're playing, but usually you're not. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you, And I, I think it's human nature to prepare like that a few times and then get a little lax because you're not in there. Cut here. Yeah. I, won't, I won't look at mm-hmm. this, but, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like he does that. And, you know, he look, I know he, he had a tough time against the Saints – uh, played a really good player, but um, you know he's he's a functional backup. Functional, and they didn't help him. No, like, they did and not. that's that's the biggest key to me is like this offense works because they have tackles. They don't help, and not not that's obviously not the only reason it works. It works because they have good players and uh, and a good scheme. But a, a big part of it is having those tackles on islands. And uh, even if if Driscoll's in there, they try not to give him too much help because then it affects your numbers in other places. So. That's why it's such a big deal to have Lane out there. No question. It's going to be it's going to be interesting. I think everybody in that stadium is going to be watching him, and not Jalen. No, I'll probably be watching. Both. I think yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. We might be watching Lane a little closer. But yeah, uh, the next matchup here is Jalen Hurts versus the Blitz. Maybe, maybe so, not. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see what what Wink does. Um, I have a feeling he's not going to blitz him that much. Really, I think I think he's going to heat him up. Do you really? Oh yeah, I and it, it it's not an easy decision, um, but I I think they will try to to get pressure on Jalen. I, I and if I were a DC, I still think that's the best mode to be in, especially with him dealing with some. Even if he's not an injury report, we know he's dealing with something uh, with that shoulder. Uh, but I think they're also going to do a little bit of both in oh, this game and definitely. try to set you up with one or the other. 
Oh, there's no question. I mean, he'll do he'll do it some, but I mean, I think that did they finish one or two in 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 blitzing in the league in in percentage? Yeah, I think they were first, um, but then in the playoff game, twenty three percent. Yeah, they were forty four during the season. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's it's, it's going to be a chess a chess match, and mm-hmm. I really like Jalen's progress against the blitz, and he's he's getting rid of the ball faster than he ever did. That's the thing. Last year, there was no question. They went to Tampa right. and they just threw everything. They threw the kitchen sink at him. I mean, it was, and he couldn't handle it. No. This year, if he was in that game, the exact same game this year, he'd handle it so much better. Yeah, and that's, and not only handle it, but but beat it, but find answers, and and I think that's that's what makes it such an interesting matchup. I'm just looking at the um, the Giants blitz numbers here. Um, so in the in the first Eagles game, now it's about the same. 18 in the first game, 21 in the second game. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, only puts five times against the Colts. Oh, well, they were up 40. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, he's going to do it. It's just a matter of how much. Yeah, and yeah. Talking I, about- I like Jalen against the Blitz now. Which certainly wasn't the case. Yeah, in the past. yeah, because he's just he's. he's what, I mean, it's really what we saw in the first game. It was blitz and man coverage behind the blitz, and he just one on ones with AJ Brown and Devontae Smith. Yeah, sign him up. And he's just more, so much more capable of finding those answers now than he was. Uh, they only blitzed five times against the Vikings. Interesting. Yeah, bring it on. That's. I mean. You know, I think the blitz is really more of an opportunity than a threat for, for Jalen. Yeah, and, and that's the beauty of it is like I think no matter how the Giants play it, the Eagles have built in answers. Yeah. Uh, now the tricky thing is is you know, if they show blitz and it's a disguise, then that, that like I think that's what they'll try to do. But so much of the Eagles game plan this week, like they have to be ready for anything, but uh Shane Sykin said they have to try to anticipate what they're going to get. And it's, it's not easy to, to figure it out and, and give Wink credit for that over the, the stretch run here because he's, they've, he's changed what they do. Yeah. Yeah. That's the sign of a good coach. And a lot of coaches don't do that. It's just like, I'm going to run what I run. Kind of shocking, honestly, from what we saw earlier in the year from him yeah. to change it up so much. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, he was yeah. running maybe that like, and look, it, it helps having some linemen who can get after the quarterback at, you know, and we'll get the Dexter Lawrence in a second. But when you have a guy like that who's just getting constant pressure, then you don't need to blitz as much. Well, they also were losing a lot of games. And what, I'm, I'm just looking here. They finished three, six, and one in their last 10 games. And that's, he just started blitzing less 10 against Washington, five against the Colts, five against the Vikings. So if you're losing, that's a real motivation for change. <laughs> Maybe. But by the same token, if he blitzes twenty times, it wouldn't shock me. Yeah, I, I think I think that's going to be their game plan to start. Because if the Eagles are the better team, so I, I think anything you can do to like throw wrenches in it, you yeah. try to do. Yeah. Right. I mean, and the Eagles hope for just like level playing field. We're the better team. And I, I think the Giant. I mean, without knowing, and we don't know. The Giants don't know how healthy, how limited Jalen. Mm-hmm. is or isn't will be won't be so if he's not a hundred percent i think the blitz has a much better chance even though it's not his leg it's not a leg injury just his mm-hmm. whole the way he's functioning i mean just his arm just everything he's if he's not if he's compromised at all then everything's gonna kind of roll to the giant's advantage and i think blitzing if, if they sense that he's not right they'll blitz more yeah it's fair. And then my next matchup kind of goes to the other side of that. If they don't blitz and they start using split safeties, Dallas Goddard against their linebackers is a crazy mismatch. Yeah, tight ends have been uh, been beating them, beating them up. Yeah, we saw it in the playoff game. They did such a good job on Justin Jefferson. TJ Hawkinson had 10 for 129 yards. Yeah. So uh, if Hawkinson can do that, I mean – Dallas Goddard should roll out of bed and have 100 yards if they play in the same he's way. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. I'm impressed. Goddard's with better. They're the two best in the NFC. Kittle's pretty good. <laughs> but he's a, he's hurt a lot. Um, but 
yeah, I, I think that certainly uh, uh, makes a lot of sense. Their linebackers can't cover them. And it, maybe they they try not to use their linebackers on them, but you need safety help for A.J. Brown. So, like, yeah, if you have Xavier McKinney on him, who they, the Giants didn't have in Week 14, like, that helps. But you're probably not using him on Goddard because you need him right. to deal with help with, with the – Sure. The receivers, because Adoree Jackson's back, but he's not. I don't think he just line him up one on one against AJ Brown either. Former teammates in Tennessee. Yeah, yeah, they were. Um, yeah. Dory played a great game against the Vikings. He did. Yeah, for how many weeks had he missed? A bunch. Yeah, he hadn't played since November. I think. Yeah, he missed like five, six games. Um, yeah, and I think I, I just have so much trust in Dallas in in big moments, and I mean I, I do in all those guys, but. Um, especially with with Jalen, just kind of—I mean, he did play against the Giants in the last game, but I don't even almost don't even count that because he wasn't he wasn't playing his game, and it wasn't even the offense. It wasn't the offense. It was kind of like a um, what's the word? You know how like when you had an old laptop and you you signed in uh, on um, in safe mode. Okay. Yeah, it was like the safe. I thought you were going to go like an old version. Or something. No, it was like it was like you signed into the MS DOS face mode, yeah, uh, a safe mode. That's what that offense was. It was like safe mode offense. Yeah, I like that. So, so I don't know what I'm talking about, but, but I really, never do. J- <laughs> Jalen hasn't um, hasn't played um, hasn't played in a, a in a real offense in this offense since the the Bears game. So, is he going to come out firing away down the field? Maybe. Wants to get a comfort, get get him comfortable, get some easy completions. And I think Goddard will be there for that. Yeah. A little pitch and catch. Dexter Lawrence. Yeah. We got to talk about this dude. He <laughs> he he was a monster against the Vikings. And Garrett Bradbury is not Jason Kelsey, but decent center who's undersized. And it was just, I mean, it, Dexter Lawrence spent most of his afternoon in the backfield. Yeah, he I mean, he's a good player, but man, they made him look like an all pro. I mean, he he could be an all pro. I didn't vote for him, but uh, certainly got some votes. Yeah. Um, the really packed house at defensive tackle this year. Yeah, yeah. Who were who were the all pros? It was uh, uh, Chris Jones and was it Jeffrey Simmons? Uh, oh, I, yeah, I'd have to. Look. I don't That's remember, fine. but uh, yeah, I think I think so. Um, he's a beast. Yeah, and. Um, I get the feeling that the O line hasn't. I, I, I touched on this before. I just feel like they haven't been at their best uh, lately, and there's been a lot of a lot of penalties, a lot of communication errors. Um, oh, Quinn Williams. Yeah, Quinn Williams. And and who made second team? You have that in front of you. Oh, I just close it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, second team was Lawrence and Simmons. Yeah, which I. That's why everyone was saying Hargrave's a snub, and he was, but who are you taking off? There? Pretty good group right yeah. there. Um, but, but yeah, um, uh, this offensive line has to play better. Um, as, and, yeah, and if you make those kind of mistakes, I mean, penalties, giving up sacks, um, I mean, those, those, they've cost, the old lines cost them two touchdowns. One of them was a terrible call, but in the last couple of weeks. Talk about the, the yeah. man downfield, the pan. Well, the pancake block. Okay, that was a terrible call because yeah. the man downfield is a stupid call, but it's, it's, it was the right call. It was the right call, yeah. But it's just I wish they would not enforce it the I'm way with they you. do. Yeah. I think the I think it was the Bo Wolf suggestion was don't call it if the guy's not engaged with with a player. Like if he's just well, if he's engaged, then it's not a penalty. You're allowed to like if so if he was a, if he was downfield but engaged with the defender then it's not a penalty. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, then forget that. But it, it's I think they're I mean they're calling it inconsistently. That's part of the problem. Sure. I mean you can find plays in every game. Every game. Yeah. And it's just a shame against the Eagles because opposing coaches are telling them watch that watch those guys downfield and then that's how they get the calls. But the Eagles get calls that way too. So, yeah. You know. But also I think the nature of Jalen's game. Mm-hmm. Um, just, well, all the RPOs. I mean, yeah, they had to stop running RPOs last year because yeah. of it. Yeah, so that's that's an issue. Um, but yeah, he's a beast, and they're going to have to contend with him. I love this stat. So this is from NFL Next Gen Stats. 
Dexter Lawrence had eight pressures in that game, five as a zero tech. In the season, he had 29 pressures aligned as a zero tech, so nose tackle head up on the center. That's 21 more than the next closest player. Is that right? Yeah. Raquan Davis had eight. Dexter Lawrence had 29. So, wow. I mean, to generate that type of pass rush from the nose tackle position is pretty unique, uh, and, and he's done it better than anyone. So that's a, a big matchup for Kelsey. Yeah, that's a that's an incredible stat. Uh, I'm just looking up uh, tight ends against the Giants. Uh, Mark Andrews had 106. He does it against everybody. Jordan Aikens had 72. Evan uh, Evan Ingram, um, a former Giant, had 67. Mm-hmm. Jake Ferguson had 57. Goddard had 46 in the yeah. in the fraud game. Yeah, they ranked 23rd in the NFL against opposing tight ends this year. Jack Stoll caught a couple passes against him. He had 20 yards against him. Calcaterra did, too. Calcaterra had two for 24 in week 14. Yes, he did. Yeah, so I like that. Uh, yeah. Just Yeah, I'm backtracking, but it, I took, noticed. it took me a while to look that up. So. Um, yeah, All what right. else you got? Want to flip sides of the field here? So Eagles. I thought, on- I thought you wanted to switch. <laughs> yeah. What do they call that, fire drill? What yeah. Kind of- sure. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Daniel Jones. Yeah. Tough player right now. Yeah. He, he's a he can beat you. And he, he's playing the best he's ever played. He's removed the mistakes from his game, which was a big Achilles heel. And he's a dual threat guy. Yeah, I was talking to James Bradbury about him, former teammate, obviously. Um last three years, right? They were together three years. He said he was always he was always really, really smart and really talented. You could tell if he if he like uh, lowered the interceptions and fumbles. He was going to be pretty good. He said he always, he he worked hard. He he was committed. He wanted to be great. And this year with with Dable and and Mike Kafka, uh, he's found his way. That the interceptions. I think only through. I think he led the NFL in fewest interceptions per pass attempt. Uh, I think one point one per hundred, uh, which is how they. How they, yeah, one point one yeah. lowest percentage in the league. Yeah, lowest percentage in the league, and his fumbles were down. I mean, this is a guy who fumbled 36 times his first three years. I think he fumbled five times this year. Um, not making mistakes. Smart guy. So he's always had the ability. I mean, he was a sixth pick. Uh, he's always had the ability, but this year he's he's got coaches who are not putting him in positions that um, he's going to fail in. And they're, I think he's a little – He's a little limited, but they're they're just putting him in situations where he can flourish, and he is. Uh, and that running ability is just unique because he's he's so tall. He's got those long loping strides, and <laughs> he they, he's he's sneaky athletic. And I know that's a term used for white guys in the draft, but yeah. like he is, he's like he's you don't expect him to take off and run, and he does. And he does it so well. Yeah, TJ said he's uh, TJ Edwards said he's he's deceptively deceptively fast, and uh, and then he said, like me, <laughs> but uh, he's dangerous right now. He played an incredible game in Minnesota, and that's not an easy. You know, it's loud there. You're on the road. Um, defense stinks. It's his first defense stinks. It's his first playoff game. Um, but yeah, I was really impressed with him. Um, I don't yeah. know if he can do it again. I'm- and the thing about him, like it, you always thought if they were going to be successful with Daniel Jones, it would be like in spite of him or right. like, but he, like he actively helped them win that game. He threw for 300 yards and ran for 78, 77, 78, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it, it's not just like they, they won in spite of him. He didn't turn the football over. He played really well and they won because of him. And yeah. I, I, that is something I didn't think we'd see. Yeah, that's a good point. And they don't have great. It's not like he's got AJ Brown and Devontae out there. Yeah, either. decent. I mean, it's like a. It's it's at least a. It's not a joke of a receiver core like we thought it might have been. You know, they they have Darius Slayton's a good player. He's the best of their bunch. But Richie James is pretty good in the slot. And then Isaiah Hodgins is like all of a sudden pretty darn good. He's been, you know, he he started that game in Week 14, but he we didn't really know that he was good right. yet. Right. Yeah, yeah. Slayton's Slayton's a big play guy, and he and uh, he and Joe seem to be kind of on the same page for the first time. Saquon is the next matchup against 
the Eagles, really their linebackers, because I think it's the linebackers have to deal with him in the run game, but also in the pass game, which is, you know, he's, he's dangerous in both of those. He looks healthy too. Yeah. And, you know, he caught 57 passes this year, uh, but only for 338 yards, which is under six per catch. Mm -hmm. But you, you see where he is now physically. I mean, he's more of a threat than, than those numbers show. Um, a healthy Saquon. And I think there were questions whether he would ever get back to this point. Yeah. Well, we, it was funny. Cause like early in the year he was healthy and he looked great, but then he, he, he was banged up and you saw that lull in the middle of the season, but they're getting him back healthy, yeah. you know, for, for these playoffs. And they're not overusing him, mm -hmm. And he's been overused a lot in his career. I think he only had what, like 11 or 12 carries against the Vikings. I don't know if you have the box score in front of you. I can pull it up. Uh, but, um, they're using him. They're they're smart. You know they'll throw um, the other guy nine for fifty three, yeah. but five catches for fifty six yards too. Yeah. So and one of those he had two touchdowns, and one of those touchdowns he he bowled over. I think it was Tomlinson, Dalvin Tomlinson it yeah. took him two yards into the end zone. Yeah. He's a, he's he's so physical. So you got to match that physicality. The thing about Saquon is, like he's gonna he's gonna have a fifty yard play in this game. He will. He just will. Just because. If he gets to the second level, it's, he's just so powerful and so fast. So you got to get numbers around him early, you know, at, at the line of scrimmage because, you know, you can get you can get those minus threes on him, those mm -hmm. minus twos. Um, and that's yeah. kind of where I think this like chess match goes, where the Eagles kind of go lighter and they have their four man front. And they're not in that that bear front. Yeah, you're probably going to see the Giants try to run on them. That's part of the game here. Is like, can they stop? the rushing attack from their their four-man front. Yeah. I mean, between Barkley and Daniel Jones, over 2,000 rushing yards and 17 touchdowns. This kind of sounds like Miles and Jalen, doesn't it? A little bit. They're dangerous. Yeah, they, they certainly are. All right, my last matchup here, and this is a, a really good one for the Eagles, Hassan Reddick against Evan Neal. And like you're looking at that line, like where's the weak spot? Where's the weak spot? It's not the left tackle. Andrew Thomas is really good. It's like second team all pro, I yeah. think. Really good player. That right tackle, Evan Neal. Susceptible. Yeah. Very susceptible. Hassan Reddick could have a quite an afternoon. Yeah, and Daniel Jones will take sacks. He's not one of those mm -hmm. like super quick release guys. Yeah. Um, you can get to him. And I think that's like the biggest advantage the Eagles I think, have. Well, the Eagles get him six or seven times in week 14. I thought it was four, but I could be wrong. Was it uh, no, it was it was six. Six? I believe it was six, yeah. Uh, no, you're right. It was four sacks, was four. 17 yards. Yeah. Um, they, they seemed like they had a lot of pressure in that game. Also. Yeah, yeah. And that's really – I mean, that's this team's strength right now is pressuring the quarterback. And I think that's – you know, once you start doing it, then, then you know, he starts looking around. Now he's getting rid of it. Now he's throwing the ball away. Uh, he doesn't want to get hit. You know, I, I think – if they can be physical with Daniel Jones and sack him early a few times, can really set the tone for the game. And as good as Andrew Thomas has been, Josh Sweat was yeah, really Sweat good back. against him early in the year. Yeah. And having a healthy Sweat in this game is a big deal because of that. Yeah, and being able to get BG fresh off the bench. Uh, you have your whole rotation back. Um, I, I think when all is said and done, Saturday night at 1130 when the game's over, we're going to be talking about the D-line. So this late. Game. It's going to be late. And it's going to be late. We're going to be tired, but I think we're going to be talking about how dominating the D line was and, and all the sacks they got on Daniel Jones. It would go a long way. Yeah, they need to. I mean, they have to because if he stands back there, he'll pick you apart. Yeah. From a health perspective, yeah. Eagles are pretty healthy going into this game. Avante Maddox, uh, by the time you listen to this, he'll be ruled out. Um, he's not going to play, uh, but he's really the only starter who's not going to play in this game, we believe. Yeah. Yeah, and they uh, I think we were adding this up yesterday. They've only lost 16 game starts to injury this year, which mm -hmm. is incredible. Yeah. Um, you know, Chauncey Garner Johnson and Dallas Scott are the only ones that had even more than a couple games. And they're both they're both totally healthy now. So Lane's not hundred percent Jalen. I think it's pretty close. Tough from, to tell, but him being off the injury report this week is certainly a good sign. It's huge. So I don't know any any other teams that have all twenty two projected starters healthy for a playoff game. Yeah, in the conference semifinals. Yeah. What do you? Where do you think Lane's going to be? 
It's the biggest question to me going into this game. Yeah, I, I don't I don't have any way to know. Like we watched them do some individual on Wednesday, but I can't tell from that. I don't I mean you couldn't tell he was hurt. He wasn't doing anything, you know, but I mean he's also it, it, they're just like fundamental drills. He's not doesn't have Josh Sweat coming at him. Um, I don't know. I, I if I had to guess, I would say he'd be functional, but not his usual self. I think he'd take that. Yeah. Yeah, no question. Yeah. No question. It's the Nissan Thrill of the Drive event. So gift yourself what you really want this holiday season and shop your local Nissan store or visit NissanUSA.com today. Just like the holidays, these offers won't last. What a dramatic pause. I was trying to make it I was good. last. Opioid addiction is a national public health crisis. The So Many You Know podcast from the Independence Blue Cross Foundation offers inspiring stories that challenge stigma, offer hope, and humanize the disease of addiction. Download the new season three of Someone You Know on all major podcast platforms. All right, Rube. Got some fun player props here from Points Bet. Uh, Want to get your take on some of them. AJ Brown, receiving yards, 75 and a half. Over. Over. Yeah. It'd be a big game. Yeah, I think I'll have a big game. He was around that number in week 14, but he was going against Nick McLeod. Right. Not a Dory Jackson. Sure. But I think he's going to really rise to the occasion. I it, He has that feeling, doesn't he? Yeah. Where yeah. it's like, it's going to, the atmosphere there is going to probably get him going. It's yeah. going to be crazy. It is. I can't wait. I, I've missed home playoff games. Yeah. it's It's almost like that. 2019 game against the Seahawks, like it's like never happened. Yeah, I mean, because Josh McCown was in there so early, and it was like they're not going to win this game. Yeah, so yeah, really, you kind of have to go back in 18. They were on the road, so really, NFC Championship game is, yeah, you know, the last time, and that was man, that was a fun, that was a wild game. I I very selfishly just want to see another championship game here. I think you will. Okay. I want to. I want to experience that again. That's un- honestly, that's unlike anything I've ever experienced. Really, the 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 vibe in that stadium yeah. before that NFC Championship game was electric. One of the greatest moments of my career covered the Eagles was the 2004 Championship game. You know, because they lost three in a row. Mm-hmm. They lost the last two at home, and they won that game with such a breakthrough. And Jim Johnson came over and hugged me. <laughs> and uh, he was like, you know, and he had he'd been coaching like 30 years and never coached in a Super Bowl. And um, yeah, it was that was a really cool moment. He came over and and then I remember him going down the tunnel and his wife was there. It was uh, yeah, I was I mean, because everyone loved Jim and he was such a big part of that, man, such a big part of that team. So that was I mean, they had a big stage set up at the center uh, of the of the field. I guess they did that in, in 17 too. Mm-hmm. And he came he came down the steps and saw me, just gave me a big hug. It was a really cool moment. Yeah. Anyway. All right. What else you got for for, for uh, props? Hurts passing yards, 245.5. I'm going to go under. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Because I think they're going to, I really think they're going to run the ball and have success doing it. I think the week off, it's going to, I think it's going to be a healthier miles. Uh, having Lane out there, I think, is going to help the running game. And Giants aren't very good at run defense anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think if if they if they commit to it, which Shane's been up and down about, but um, I think they'll have success running the ball. And he won't need to throw that much. Interesting. So you have AJ over seventy five and a half. Hurts under two forty five and a half. I think I'd have both of them over. Okay. Um, Hurts rushing yards. And this is a tricky one. Yeah. Fifty point five. Take the under. Yeah. I think I'm going under there. Yeah. And I, I I just, I mean, he could easily go over, he could easily have 120 yards, but I just feel like there's a part of him that feels like if he's, if he's having success throwing, uh, throwing the ball and coming off this injury, and I know it's, it's an arm injury, but he just might be more comfortable Staying out of staying out of trouble. I mean, he was really reluctant to run two weeks ago. Um, I don't know. I, I'm just kind of playing a little psychology. What what he might be thinking, which is probably a big mistake. Yeah, uh, I think they can throw on him. Yeah, I do too. Uh, but I think they can run on him, and 
he's a big part of that. So I wouldn't be shocked if he's over, but I'm going to take the under. Okay. What are you taking? Yeah, under on You're that. You're going under. I'm, I'm over on the two passing props. Okay. But under on that. I see a trend development. <laughs> it's time to get your swagger back with points bet sportsbook. Points bet your move. All right, Rube. We have independently ranked the remaining quarterbacks in the playoffs here. So I don't know how they they line up for you, but there are eight of them. I know that. Uh, and I just go eight to. We'll each do eight, then we'll each do seven. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll count down, really build the suspense yeah. <laughs> before we both say the same guy at number one. Yeah. Uh, but who you have at number eight? I got um, Trevor Lawrence. Interesting. Yeah. He is much higher for me. Yeah. I, and I like him, and I think um, he's got a bright future. I mean, he threw four touchdowns late in that game, but he also <laughs> threw four interceptions mm -hmm. to get him in the hole in the first place. I love what Doug has done with him and just kind of just rebuilt his game. But, um, you know, he so far in his career, I mean, he's been up and down, and he's a 500 quarterback or below if you count last year, obviously. But um, I, I think he's got a bright future, but uh, I got him eighth. Yeah. And this is tricky because we did not set like guidelines right. to this. There's right. no like, we didn't say if it was in one game right. and like career this, this year. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, yeah. you know, we probably had different criteria, but I have Brock Purdy there. Um, and it's nothing against him. It's just I got him number one. <laughs> it's not crazy. Uh, it's just I, you know, it's it's been such a, a small sample size sure. that I'm not ready to put him above any of these other players. But he's certainly <laughs> I'm played, above a few. He's but he's certainly played really well. Yeah. All right, number seven. Uh, I went Dak. I have Daniel Jones there. Okay. I went Dak just because and he played incredible the other day. Um, certainly, um, but I, I just you know. It, it, I just look at the, the body work and the interceptions mm -hmm. and he's been great against this team. If, if the Cowboys were playing the Eagles, I might have him higher, but uh, I just don't have a lot of faith in him. He, he has not played well. He, he was, he was brilliant um, over the weekend in, uh, in, in Tampa, but I just don't. Yeah. Definitely in inconsistency. There. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. No doubt about yeah. it. I have Daniel Jones in that seventh spot. You won't have to wait long for me to get the deck, but uh, Daniel Jones <laughs> at seven and it, like I said, I, I think all eight of these quarterbacks are playing really well, but I just they're all young. Mm -hmm. They're I, all in their twenties. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it, the the age of you know the, the Tom Brady's, Aaron Rodgers, it's a real, Matt Ryan. It's a changeover. And you know, Roethlisberger. I mean, there was just a couple of years ago, all the playoff quarterbacks like in their mid thirties. Mm -hmm. Drew Brees. Yeah. You know, I mean, Peyton not that long ago. Uh, yeah, Rodgers and Roethlisberger, all those guys and. Real, real kind of changing of the guard at quarterback. I like that. Yeah, it's fun. It's good for the league. Yeah. Yeah. So I have Jones at seven. I'll give you a six. I have, I have Dak Prescott at six. Yeah, I already wrote down here. Yeah. So you kind of hinted at that. Yeah, similar. That's why I figured I'd just go ahead and tell you. Yeah. Uh, similar reasons that you have him at seven. I, You know, it's it's been very inconsistent. Um, that doesn't mean he can't carve you up on any given day because he's, he's shown that ability, but you just don't know what version is going to show up. Right. Right. Um, number five, I got Brock Purdy. I, I've who do you who do you have at six? Um, uh, Dan, oh, we're, oh, we're at six. I have Daniel Jones six. Yeah, yeah. I thought we we I, I said we just flip flop oh, okay. Dak and Daniel Jones. Okay, uh, but I've pretty ahead of Jones, and um, I know it's not a lot, but he's been so consistently good. And that one pass, that one play where he escaped mm -hmm. escape pressure in the pocket, rolled out to his left, rolled back to his right, escaped a, a tackler, spun out of it, and then threw a unbelievable pass to. Uh, Ayuk that he he didn't hold on to. I mean, that that play, that single snap told me, put him at number five. Okay, <laughs> he's. I mean, he's playing at. I don't think people understand how how rare it is for a a rookie drafted in any round to mm -hmm. play that way, or a seventh round pick at any point in his career to play that way. I think Pat Hayden's the only other seventh round pick to win a playoff game, I believe, um, and that was in the seventies. So. I know it's not a lot, and he could come back down to earth, but uh, I've seen enough to put him at number five. I have not, but I understand your reason there. At five, I have Trevor Lawrence. Uh, the talent's winning out for me. I, I still see it in him, and I know he helped get them into that hole, but pulling him out of it was, like to me, yeah. his arrival. No question. 
Yeah, you can make that case. Tough game from this weekend, <laughs> but um, yeah. I've been impressed. Although with they're, you know, the Chiefs' defense is nothing special. Yeah. You can put up some numbers. Their defense is basically going up forty nothing, and you know, making you one dimensional. Yeah, I have a feeling our one and four are the same, and our two and three are going to be flip flop. Just, I'm just a hunch without knowing. Really? Yeah, just guessing. Okay, who do you have it for? I have Jalen Hurts for. I do too, and I, I wanted to put him higher because he's Why been you? because I if couldn't justify to. it. Okay. I couldn't justify it. I wanted to. I but then I reasoning I, I I couldn't put him above the other players. And that's not it's not a knock on him at all. He he was in the MVP conversation for a reason this year. It was so good. Um but I, I think four is the right spot for him. Yeah, and if you had asked me a month ago, I might have had him three. Mm-hmm. Um I he hasn't, you know, regardless of the injury, he just hasn't been quite as sharp and um Inter- more interceptions mainly. Yeah, I'm, I mean the one against the Giants week 18 was awful. Yeah, yeah, it was. I don't know what happened there, but uh, he shouldn't have thrown the pass. <laughs> uh, but he's, I, I, I can see him having a huge game Saturday night. I, I just, if he's healthy, he should. And that defense and a healthy Jalen and a healthy AJ and a healthy Goddard and a mm-hmm. healthy Devonte, I could see Hertz just having a like a you know, a big time, like kind of a rival. Obviously Tampa was a forgettable uh, experience. I could see him being great Saturday night. Okay. You think we're going to be different here? Who do you have at three? I have Burrow at three. I have Josh Allen at three. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. Uh, I went back and forth. Josh Allen's turned the ball over a lot. A lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A, uh, a little too like much. Like you like his aggressiveness, but sometimes, man. Yeah. But um, in the postseason – 17 touchdowns, three interceptions. Mm-hmm. And I, I really – I think for a quarterback, you know, you're, you're judged by how you do in the playoffs, and he's been incredible. Well, my number two did get to the Super Bowl last year. Yeah. No, they've – I mean, but Josh Allen's – I mean, look, it's a toss-up to me. Um, there's just some I, – I just – I just have a little more faith in Josh Allen than than Burrow right now, and Burrow's got they, he's got some O line issues that that's not him, but as far as performance, um, I mean it's intriguing. It, it's intriguing. He had O line issues last year and got to the Super Bowl. I, I totally totally get it. Top three QBs are all in the AFC here and are all young. Mm-hmm. Mahomes for everything he's done. What's he 27, 28? 28. It's incredible. Yeah. I wonder if there's ever been a year where all eight. Of the of the QBs in this round, under thirty. Under thirty, is Dak still under thirty? I, I think he is. I'd be easy to look up with the stat head. Um, <laughs> I think Dak's twenty. I feel like Dak's twenty nine. Dak is twenty nine. Yeah. So they're all under thirty. Yeah, he won't be thirty till the summer. Um, yeah, I'll look that up. I have a feeling we'll have an answer to that we will. at some point. Probably might be in my observations on Saturday. Yeah. And then I mean, Mahomes a one. Like, that was. I wrote that one in pen when <laughs> when you said we should rank these guys. Yeah, he's um, a special player. He's on another. And level. I feel like sometimes like the the coverage gets a little overblown with him. Like he, you know, all the videos of him throwing no look passes. And you're like, well, other guys have done this. Like Matt Stafford threw no look passes in Detroit for ten years, and no one gave a damn. Yeah, because no one caught him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, it, he he's a special player. And every year, there's a point where. Like he'll throw a hell of a bad game, throw a couple picks, and you know, and they'll lose. They lost. Who did they lose to? They lost to the Colts early. Mm-hmm. Uh, they lost to the Bengals. Um, but every once in a while, have a bad game. It's like, oh, he's, you know, it's over. And yeah. you, you know, you always see these these tweets about him. But um, he's played at such an incredibly high level since he came into the league. It's 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 astonishing. I was I wrote about. I mean, he's never his worst season. He was eleven and three. You know he's he's had two, he's had three seasons he's had four seasons with thirty seven or more touchdowns. I mean, like he and he's got a, he's in a great system with a great coach. He's a great case study too. And they also lost a hell landing, of a weapon. Landing spot matters. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's without um, you know they've had injuries. Tyreek Hill. Uh, it doesn't matter. The thing just keeps rolling. It was a great quote. I think it was from uh, Travis Kelsey about Big Red. He said, "He said <laughs> something like Andy could get my grandfather open." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we we saw that for years here when he had, you know, 
not the best receivers out there to say nicely. Imagine if Donovan had had AJ Brown and Devontae. I mean, he always had good receiving tight ends and backs for the great, era. Great backs, but but like even his good receiving tight ends, like that was within that era. Like he never had right, you know, these type of tight ends. Type, yeah. yeah, Kittle type, Goddard type. That's true. Um, Chad Lewis was catching forty balls, and we thought mm-hmm. any, you know. Yeah, that was a super set star. records. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. But I, I think if Donovan, well, we'll never know. But if he had that, it would have been fun to watch if he yeah. had that kind of talent. He He'd had, probably tell you that he had an All Pro. Yes, he would, and he <laughs> has. He had an All Pro, uh, you know, receiver for twenty one games, <laughs> put up incredible numbers, and got to a Super Bowl. But that's beside the point. Yeah. Uh, the last thing here, and this is nothing to do with the playoffs, but chance the Eagles could go to Germany next year. That'd be fun. Have you been to Germany? I've not been to Germany. I was in Germany for about a week because um, when I was a kid, I was 13, and my dad was invited. You know, my dad was a physiologist, and he was invited. Wasn't that the, dangerous? That with the war going on? Uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, uh, but no, it was really, really cool. And um, he was invited to a, like a med- medical seminar type thing, and he was speaking over there. Uh, yeah, and we actually got to go to East Germany and West Germany, so we were in Leipzig and Dresden and Berlin, and yeah, it was really, it was really a lot of fun. It'd be fun, I, and look. So they, where's the stadium? Is it in Berlin? Well, they have um, uh, Munich or Frankfurt. Okay, are the two cities over there, uh, and it's possible. And there's so two of the teams the Eagles play on the road next year are two of the teams you know who uh, so it's the Chiefs and Patriots will have home games in Germany. So possible. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I think every every team's going to do it. Uh, they rotate. So I thought the Eagles were going to end up in uh, London this year. Yeah, for that Cardinals game, but it didn't happen. Yeah, or no, was that Mexico City this year for the Cardinals or Houston uh, game? I forget. I, I think it was Mexico City. Yeah, that that London trip in 2018 was so much fun. I, I know you had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, you were in Marlton. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was. So you would go to this one and, and you would have a blast. Yeah. It's just fun. It's just so much fun. You know, the press box at Wembley is open. It's open air. You're mm-hmm. in the stands. That's cool. It's so cool. It was a beautiful day. Yeah. Spend, spend a week in London. Yeah. So, yeah, you'll have a good time. Before we wrap this up, uh, prediction? Do you, have, you don't have to give me a, a number, but you feeling good about this for the Eagles? Yeah, I think the Eagles win. Uh, I, I, I don't think they're going to blow them out. I think it's going to be a little tense for a while. Uh, but... Uh, I, I I really like them at home. I like them with Jalen. I like them with a bye week. There's just a lot of things. I like them healthy. There's just a lot of things in their favor. And the Giants were impressive. I, I don't know if they can play that well again, especially against this defense, but uh, they certainly got the Eagles' attention. I, I think they'll play hard and they'll be competitive, but uh, I think by midnight uh, we'll be getting ready for NFC Championship game. Yeah, I think you're right. And it's, it's a talent thing to me. I just think the Eagles are – Better across the board yeah. than the Giants. If, if the Eagles lose this game, it's a disaster. It's There's true. no way around it. I mean, if if you can't beat a team like the Giants at home as the number one seed with 21 of your 22 starters on the field. Or 22. It, I mean, if you're yeah. counting Fonte as a, I'm a, as a starter. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, you know, it, it's worth mentioning that the Giants' two Super Bowls, they were a wild card team. The two Super Bowls they won. Obviously, they're different teams and different coach, but uh, it does happen. I, I have a chart. I'm going to actually send it to you of of every number one seed and what they did, mm-hmm. how that how that how that year went. And number one seeds do lose. Yeah, they do lose. Um, it would I, it would be a catastrophe. Yeah, to to lose uh, to a team in your division. I mean, it doesn't matter. But uh, they are five and zero oh, all time in this round at home. Knock on polyester, whatever it is, polyester. <laughs> <laughs> the table's made of polyester. That was the wrong word. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. All right. If you enjoy the Eagle Eye podcast <laughs> no, and our about. misnaming of materials, please do us a favor, rate and subscribe wherever you get your pods. If you're watching on YouTube, please click the like button, subscribe there as well. We'll talk to you in the middle of the night. Can't wait. Sunday morning before the sun is up. Thanks, everyone. This has been Eagle Eye presented by Nissan. We'll talk to you soon.